محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله اللهم 
Just to make sure, is the microphone in the right spot now? Or should, should I move forward? forward? Good? Move forward a little bit? All right. All the Billahi and the Shaitan and the Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Abil Qasim and Mustafa Muhammad. Amen. This year, the topic has been called The Quiet Before the Storm. And what we've been doing has been to examine the words, the thoughts, and the stances of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. The idea being that we would look for inspiration from the things that he did perhaps before his imamate. Or even after he became our imam, the first period, in the time of Muawiyah, or even the Qiyam. We're looking at all of these areas and we're looking for answers. We're looking for inspiration. What we're trying to do is to connect the dots. We want to find out what we're supposed to be doing now. What are relevant lessons that we should have and learn before our imam returns? The idea being that you and I want to get our ducks in a row. We know that the imam is on his way. Our job is to kind of take these lessons, inshallah, implement these lessons, and in this way to hasten the reappearance of the imam. So, there's a, the topic tonight is the real role that Imam Hussein in particular plays in our salvation. There's a very famous hadith, I'm sure all of us have heard it. We, it's quoted from the Prophet that he said, إِنَّ الْحُسَيْنِ مِسْبَاحُ الْهُدَى وَالسَّفِينَةَ النَّجَاةِ That truly, Hussein is the lantern of guidance and the ark of salvation. Now, we've heard this many times, and I want to ask some questions, something for us to think about. Why is it that the enemies of Islam from the past until now are so sensitive to Imam Hussein? Why is it that he is truly 
the lantern, the lantern of guidance, and the ark of salvation. What role is he playing now? What role have the enemies always seen from Imam Hussein? Do you know how many times the grave of Imam Hussein was raised to the ground by the Tawahid? He's already passed. Karbala is over. Raised to the ground. How many? One time enough? Two times enough? Why the sensitivity? But of course, this isn't limited to the past. If we look now, the Yazids and Shimrs of the time, they're very concerned about Imam Hussein. They're concerned about how he's portrayed. They would love to see something like Arba'in, that beautiful communal act of worship. This many people worshiping God, moving in a certain direction. They want to reduce it to meaningless rituals, foolish rituals, things that turn anyone off. So what's that role that Imam Hussein plays? Right now, what's the role he's playing with Sheikh Zakzaki? And the movement over there. What is he doing for us? We want to kind of figure these things out. And then of course, you and I, we're not only talking big picture. Big picture is important. What we're trying to do, the cause of the Imam, but the role that he plays in our personal salvation. That's inshallah what we want to address the night. But before I do that, before I jump into the main topic, I have to, in order for us to kind of really appreciate it and make sure that we're actually capable of receiving that help of the imam, I have to remind us about what we learned yesterday. What we learned yesterday, very briefly, was the idea that in order for us to be successful in this path, we have to have something which is called iman ashurai That true faith that we said actually has conditions. Every person who considers themselves a mu'min or mu'mina is actually not a mu'min or mu'mina. We've got a lot of ritualists. What we're trying to do is to make sure we're, we're part of the solution, not part of the problem. Ritualist Muslims who are doing a lot of acts of worship, we're part of the problem. They're part of the reason the imam still isn't here. Were there ritualist Muslims at the time of Imam Hussein? 100%. 100%. Doing acts of worship. Let me, let me mention some of the acts of worship. Imam Sajjad, please send a salawat. I want us to just think about how serious of a problem this is. Imam Sajjad says this. 30,000 men marched on my father to shed his blood Qurbatan ilallah. This is what the Imam says. He says, Kullun yataqarrabu ilallah azza wa jal bidamihi. Those 30,000 men, those ritualist Muslims, marching on the Imam to kill the son of Fatima. Why? To get closer to God. To get closer to God. Brothers and sisters, do you know how many times Shimr made Hajj? Shimr. 16 times he walked Hajj. Walked to Hajj. This, these stories, this opportunity to be in the tent of Imam Hussein, to go over these lessons, it's not a joke for us. It's not a ritual. No, we're trying to learn what happened, what went wrong, so we can understand how Imam Hussein saves us. So remember what we said, what we learned before was the idea that being a mu'min, being on the right path, being able to help out in the cause is very different than being a ritualist Muslim. One of the conditions, brothers and sisters, was the idea that we have intellectual conviction when it comes to Islam. Ayat of Quran, Surah Baqarah 285. There's many ayat of, of the Quran about this. I'm mentioning one. وَقَالُوا They said, سَمِعْنَا وَعَتَعْنَا We have heard and we obeyed. Brothers and sisters, when the Quran says we have heard, it's not passive listening. I go to the mall, music is playing. I'm not listening. I hear it. It's coming in my ears. 
That's not what's being talked about. We're talking about listening, understanding, and then accepting. Let's listen to the verse again. Sami'na wa ata'na. We've heard, we've understood, we realize what you said. This is the word of God. And then we obeyed. Obedience based on insight. That's what Allah is looking for. The first condition of this imam. Because otherwise, people can be doing all sorts of rituals. Like those people, 30,000 of them. Do they, are they worth anything? No. Because God wants to know how you arrived at this conclusion. Why are you doing these acts of worship? That's important for God. People can do good things, but the reason might not be Elahi. There's a story I heard, and I really pray that this is not true, inshallah. They said that once this doctor was giving these three elderly gentlemen a memory test. So he went to the first old man and he said, what is three times three? And the old man looked at him, he said, 275. The doctor said, subhanAllah. Then he went to the next old man. He said, what's three times three? He said, Tuesday. Then he came to the last old man, he said, well, what's three times three? He said, it's nine. He said, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I said, how did you come to that conclusion? He said, it's so easy. I took 275 and I subtracted Tuesday. I came up with nine. People might do deeds, many deeds. Does that mean the Iman is Ashura'i? In order to be a mu'min, this is a carefully thought out intellectual realization. The reason I'm mu'min, I, everybody could become kafir. I can't unlearn the truth. We're going to build on this later. After that, we said that if I'm truly a mu'min, Islam does have expectation. Allah's a straight shooter. The Quran calls a spade a spade. Ayat of Quran now. The Quran says this. This is Surah 3, verse number 132. Wa'ati Allah. Obey Allah. Wa Rasul. And the Messenger. Then what does it say? La'allakum turhamun. Maybe. If you do that, if you obey Allah and the Messenger, maybe Allah will have mercy on you. لَعَلَّكُمْ turhamun. Islam is a very practical religion. Yes, there's an expectation. If it's really God who's spoken to me, my creator, then yeah, then after that I just do. I'm committed, whatever it takes. It can't be the case that I'm a believer in my mind. I've done the mental acrobatics. I could mention a thousand proofs for why Imam Hussein is an Imam. But it doesn't affect me. I heard another story that definitely isn't true. They said once there was a Christian priest, and instead of going to Sunday service, he decided to skip the Sunday service and go bear hunting. So he went into the mountains, he had his rifle, he was looking for the bear, and he bumped into a bear. The bad news is, as soon as he bumped into the bear, he started rolling down the mountain, rolling, moving quickly. He ended up hitting into a rock and breaking both of his legs. Rifle on one side, broken legs, but that was the good news. The bear was now charging towards him. So then he decided to make toba. He said, oh Allah, make this bear a Christian. And don't you know that bear stopped in its tracks, it raised its hands to heaven, and it said, Lord, bless this food I'm about to have. Amen. That's the op. The Quran is very clear. Wa'ati Allah. Once you know, that's it. Done. Obey Allah and the Rasul. Then the mercy. So now, now that we've done that, let's talk a little bit about that real role that Imam Hussein played in salvation. 
our salvation? Why is it that we're gathered in these tents? Why do we take this time out? Why do we bring our families? And by the way, let me just salute those parents who brought their children. It's a lot easier to come into a majlis. The children are over off some. Those parents who brought their children. Alhamdulillah, we do have a children's majlis. But we've also have parents who have small children. From the beginning, they're used to the idea. We come to the majlis of Imam Hussein. Very important. What is the role that Imam Hussein plays in our salvation, our personal salvation? We said, I mentioned the hadith. The hadith was that, Inna al Hussein, truly Hussein, Misbahul Huda. He's the lantern of guidance. And my question for you is this Imam Hussein wasn't able to save everybody, was he? He. Imam Hussein, look at the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt. He tried to save everyone. He tried to save everyone. When you look at the qiyam of the Imam, how many times did the Imam go over and make statements? We have a hadith from the Imam where he explained, so there's times where he explains his philosophy, why he's doing this, what's the ruling, what's the ruling I'm acting upon, what did the Prophet say? One of them is, Man ra'a sultanan ja'iran. Whoever sees a tyrannical tyrant, then so on. Right? Everybody's taklif was to go with Imam Hussein. Everyone. So Imam wanted to save everyone. More than that, the Imam, if he had only had help, he could have done what Imam Mahdi will do. You'd be surprised. Our scholars have talked about this. What percentage of the people were needed in order for the Imam to topple the government in Kufa? And then after that, march on Basra, march on Sham. Was it everybody? No. If only a small portion of the people had done their responsibility, then the Imam would have led them to victory. He would have established the kingdom of God on the earth. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the way that God works, brothers and sisters, is this. It's conditional victory that we've been promised. We've been promised victory, but it's conditional vi victory. If we do our part, then the imam becomes victorious. The wali, if the mu'mineen do their part, then he's invincible. Conditional victory. So what happened is, we know that our imam wanted to save everybody. We know that he succeeded in saving many. You've heard the stories. I'm going to tell some of the stories. You've heard the stories before. On the way to Karbala, the Imam was able to save people. There were some people who the Imam saved on the day of Ashura, before the battle began. So he succeeded. But there were other people who the, the Imam, who's this ark of salvation, this lantern of guidance. He spoke with them. He addressed them. Why wasn't he able to save them? This goes back to us now so that we can be saved. Why was he able to save some? He's there to save everyone. We've heard the hadith of the prophet. It's true. It's hujjah. But he was able to save some. He wasn't able to save others. How does this affect us? What happens, brothers and sisters, is the people Imam Hussein was addressing were different. The problem wasn't Imam Hussein. It wasn't that he wasn't Misbahul Huda. The problem was the people. Now it becomes practical. I'll give you an example. Our Imam is trying to save everyone, even his enemies. Terrible people. Maybe you've read this, you've heard this. Omar bin Sa'd, the commander of the enemy army. The Imam, once he realized the battle is about to begin, the Imam invited Omar bin Sa'd. He sent a message to him. They met secretly, had a long conversation, and the Imam started, you can read about the conversation. The Imam's like, are you, are you going to really fight me? The Imam's trying to save even one person. This is going to happen. Why have my blood on your hands? He told him, he said, don't you fear God? You know who I am. 
Omar bin Sa'd started coming up with excuses. He said that, I'm afraid they'll destroy my house. The imam said, I'll buy you, I'll buy you another house. I'm afraid. The imam said that, I have land worth 30,000 gold dinars. Muawiyah tried to buy this land from me. I'll give that to you, yours. Just don't commit this sin. Umar bin Sa'd said no. Once the imam saw he was that stubborn, I want the kingdom of Ray. He was that stubborn, then the imam got angry then. The imam said, I pray to God that you die on your bed. I pray to God, God never forgives you in Yawm al -Qiyama. I hope you only eat up a little of that. You know what Umar bin Sa'd said? He was like, well, if I don't get the wheat, then barley will do. So the imam, misbah al reaching out even to his enemies. But why is it some don't get guided? Others, the story that I want to share with you from imam Hussein, you'll see someone who was completely off, how he got guided. What was different about that person? What's the principle? So that you and I can receive the guidance of our Imam. Salawat, please. There's two traits that I'm going to mention that are good for us to have if we want to receive that guidance from the Imam. He's trying to reach out. He's still guiding even now. If we want to receive his guidance, there are two very important traits that we should have. If we can have these traits, mentioned in the Hadith of Ahlul Bayt, then after that, the chances of us being able to receive that guidance, the Imam can take our hand, it's very high. What are those two things? Number one, brothers and sisters, is that a true mu'min or mu'mina? I'm going to read the hadith. It's possible that a mu'min or mu'mina not be perfect. It's not that everybody, in the story of Imam, everybody was there, they were all perfect. No, no. It's possible that a mu'min or mu'mina not be perfect. But there are certain values that that person needs to have. If that person has those values, the imam is able to reach and take their hand. What are the values that are very important for us to have? Even if I'm not perfect, but I want that guidance of the imam. I want to be one of the soldiers of the imam. I don't want to be part of the problem. I'm not, in my heart of hearts, a ritualist Muslim. Number one. True believers, brothers and sisters, if they're making a mistake, they're not militant about it. Some people, if they're doing something which is wrong, which Allah doesn't like, and I'm going to mention the hadith where it's room for constant improvement. I'm going to mention the hadith later. There is no one who should say, well, I'm doing all of my wajibat, alhamdulillah, so this discussion has nothing to do with me. I'm going to mention the hadith later. But a mu'min or mu'mina, because we all have room for improvement, the true believer has certain characteristics that allow for that imam to be able to guide them. One of them is that the mu'min or mu'mina isn't militant about their mistakes. If I'm doing something wrong, I should have the chivalry, the honesty, to say that what I'm doing isn't right. Not defend it. Not get angry. What are you, the haram police? There's some people, they'll admit when they're making a mistake. You call them out, this is incorrect. Brother, sister, you can improve in this area. They'll accept it. Some people know, very defensive. L listen to this hadith. This is from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Salawat, please. Allah. The Imam says this. He says that there are three groups of people who will be the closest to God on Yawm al Qiyamah when he does the Hisab. When God's taking account, there's three groups of people who will be closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are those three groups? I'm going to mention one of them. One of them is this. Rajulun, a man. Qala al He says the truth. 
fima alay wala. Whether it be in my interest, whether it be against my interest. If I'm making a mistake, I can admit it. I can say that, no, that's true. What I'm doing is not right. Allah says this. And by the way, there's ahkam about this. Let's say, God forbid, I'm going to give an extreme example. None of us are doing this, but just as an extreme example for us to understand. Let's say someone, God forbid, God forbid, was drinking alcohol. An alcoholic. Question, from a jurisprudential point of view, is it wajib on me? I'm drinking alcohol, God forbid. Is it wajib on me if someone else is going to drink alcohol? Another Muslim, another mu'min or mu'mina. Is it wajib on me to do al-amr bil-ma'ruf wa nahyan al-munkar? Question. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not practicing in my own life. Is it wajib on me to stop others? What they tell us is this. Even if you, God forbid, are not practicing, you have to say that what God said is this. Those conditions are there. That person should not do that. The person might turn around. Well, then, why are you doing it? The honest person who says the truth, whether it be in my interest or against my interest, what I'm doing is wrong. What Allah said is that. That person can be saved. They're not militant. There's room for improvement. The imam can take their hand. Now, number two, brothers and sisters, is that am I truly... And my heart of hearts looking to improve, looking to be better. Imam Khomeini, may Allah bless his soul, they said that, the leader says this, he said, after the month of Ramadan, you would meet Imam Khomeini, visibly the Imam had gotten better. He was more Nurani, constantly improving. But I'm going to mention the hadith. What the Ahlul Bayt want from you and I, this Muharram, every Muharram, is constantly trying to get better. Not pleased with where we are. This is the second trait, very important. Let's look at the hadith. The Imam says this is from Imam Baqir. La musibata. There is no calamity. There is no musiba. Kastahanatika bidhamb. Like taking sin lightly. There is no musiba, Imam Bakr says. Like, take it, it's okay, God understands. There's some people who are like, what I'm doing is wrong. I don't like it. I'm working to get through it. I'll never defend it. What's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. Call a spade a spade. I'm honest with myself between me and God. The Imam says, this is now the words of the Imam, Imam Sada. He says, this person is a mu'min. Hadith. Man sarrathu hasanatu. That person whose good deeds please them. If I'm able, if Allah gives tawfiq, if I'm able to have success, this pleases me. He says, wa and sa'athu sayya'atuhu. And when I do sins, it really troubles me. I'm not a perfect mu'min or mu'mina, but I don't justify it. I don't think it's okay. It troubles me for who a mu'min, imam. This person is a believer. I'm not militant, looking to improve. If someone has these qualities, the imam can take their hand. I want to give you another story of the imam. Guidance of the imam. And then after that, I want to end with a story of somebody who was like this, modern times. One of the famous stories that you and I have heard about Karbala is the story of a man named Zuhair. Zuhair is not Shia. Zuhair was trying to avoid the Imam. He and the Imam, he had gone to Hajj, returning from Hajj, but he would try to, do, this is Zuhair, he would try to make sure that he wasn't stopping in the same rest area where the Imam is stopping. I don't want to meet Hussein. And he would deliberately, if it meant I have to linger a little more to not be there, come a little earlier, drive the camels, we'll go faster so that we don't meet him. He said, but what happened was one day, 
there was no choice but to be in the same camp as Abu Abdullah. He said, when I was there in the camp, the imam was on one side, I was sitting on one side, I'm still not ready. The imam sent a messenger. They said the man came over, assalamu alaykum. He said that Abu Abdullah wants to talk to you. They described the situation. They said, Zuhair, he's looking down. The people are around him. They know we don't want to meet the imam. His wife said something. She said, Subhanallah, the son of the prophet's calling you? At least go talk to him. Maybe you don't like what he says, leave it. But respect? He sent a messenger. Zuhair went. We don't know much about what, was, what happened between, but they said when Zubair came back, he was happy. He was radiant. His face was radiant. Some of our ulama have guessed about what transpired, the connection between what happened. He wasn't that militant person. He was trying to improve. What happened? When he came back, he told his companions, he said, whoever wants to go with me, I'm with Abu Abdullah. Whoever wants to leave, leave. He said, but let me tell you something. And he mentioned a hadith. This is what the scholars are saying. It seems the imam reminded him of something. For the true believer, they're not militant. All it takes is a reminder. He mentions, he says that we did jihad. We're doing jihad. And alhamdulillah, Allah granted us victory. Allah granted us victory and we got a lot of spoils. Salman al-Farsi, that companion, he was with us. And he saw everybody excited, alhamdulillah, we won the battle, ghana'im. He said, are you excited about the ghana'im? Are you excited about the... He said, yeah. Salman, Salman al-Farsi told me something I'd never forget. He says, إِذَا أَدْرَكْتُمْ شَبَابِ آلِ مُحَمَّدِ Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. When you meet those youth from the family of the Prophet, فَكُونُوا أَشَدَّ فَرَحًا Be more excited then about doing qital with him than you are about these gana'im now. All it took was a reminder, and then he changed. Allah loves those who are true with themselves. I want to tell you a true story about one of our, he, he passed now. You can call him, now he's shaheed. This man, he says that I didn't want to become Shaheed. He's true, he's honest. Tell the truth, whether before you or against you. He said, but when I was 16 or 17, I joined the war, I'm fighting, I'm defending the Islamic Republic, and he said, I was making dua day and night to become Shaheed. Every single prayer, making dua, asking Allah, oh Allah, make me a Shaheed. He said, until one of my friends came to me in his dream, in my dream, and he was Shaheed. He'd already passed. And that friend told him, such and such, on such and such day, you will be Shaheed. He said, when I heard that, I was terrified. I had been making dua for it, but I didn't want to be Shaheed. The guy said, I've been given the information. You're going to be a Shaheed on that day. He said, I woke up from the dream and now I'm terrified. He, said, he was honest. He said, I started telling God, Oh Allah, I told you so many times I want to be Shaheed. There's a lot of other duals that I made. You didn't answer those. Just don't answer this one. He said, but I resigned myself. You see the Shaheed in your dreams. Resigned myself to Shahada. That day came. When that day came, his commander came over to him. He said, such and such, I need you to go to this particular area. The brothers have been ambushed. They were in Kurdistan. The brothers have been ambushed. You and a number of brothers, you go over there to rescue the brothers. He said, we went. 
I knew what it was about. We went. He said, we got ambushed. Every single one of my friends was martyred. He himself, he said, I was shot 17, 18 times. As he's telling the story, he's like, I still have a bullet next to my heart that troubles me. He said, so I'm there. I fought as long as I could. Everybody's been martyred. Nobody left. Now it's just me. He said the enemy came out of their hiding spots and they would go over to check each shaheed and they would give him one more mercy shot. He said, now I'm praying to God. They think that I'm shaheed. He said, I'm laying down on my face. One of them came over to me. They flipped me over. They kicked me and then they gave me the mercy shot right next to my heart. They didn't finish with that, though. He said they dragged my bleeding, broken body over to one of the vehicles with kicking, shoving. They shoved me under the vehicle. They shot the tire, and the vehicle came down on top of me. He said, now I'm bleeding out. I'm going back to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reciting dhikr, bleeding in pain, teeth broken, ribs broken, bullets in me, bleeding out. He said, something amazing happened. He said, suddenly I felt something exit my body. And suddenly I'm in the air. And I don't feel any pain. And I'm looking at my broken, bloody body on the ground. He said, I thought to myself, as I'm in the air, it would be nice to move to another part of the sky. He said, as soon as I thought it, I moved. So now I'm looking at my body, the bodies of the other shohada on the ground, but I feel no plain. He said, it is so beautiful. If you thought the creation of this world is nice, you don't know what a painter God is until you see the other side. He said, suddenly the other shohada also took flight. And he said, now we're just loving it. We were soaring. And he said, and then I met the most beautiful person I had ever seen in my entire life. He said, all of the beautiful people in the world wouldn't be the fingertip of this person, the voice of this person. He addressed me and he said, Rafi, you don't want to be a Shaheed. You go back. I said, no, I, I want to now. He said, no, you're not going to be a Shaheed. He showed me my place. And I went back. He said, suddenly now I'm in my body again. Now I'm bleeding out. Now I'm in pain. And the brothers had come to gather the bodies of the shohada. These guys were in such bad shape, they thought he's shaheed. Go over, drag him, put him in the back of a Toyota, throw a blanket on top of him, and throw the other bodies of the other shohada on top of him. And he said, they started driving back to the hospital in Urumiye. He said that I felt every bump in the road. He said, not only that, the blood from the other shohada is now running down my face. My lips get closed because of the blood. My eyes get closed. Blood from other people, blood from myself. He says, at this point, I can only hear voices because I can't see anything. They pull up to one of the hospitals and they say, this hospital doesn't have cold chambers. Go to the hospital of Ayatollah Talaqani. We end up going over there. And then he said, I start to think about it. I'm like, I hope to God they realize I'm alive. Otherwise, if I go in that cold chamber, I'm done. He said, in my heart of hearts, I started doing liquor. I started reciting the name of our imam. He says, as they took me out and they're about to put me in the cold chamber, I came to, my eyes opened, and I told them, I said, what are you doing? I'm alive. The people who saw me were holding the stretcher, about to put him in. They thought he was a shaheed who came back to life. He said, they dropped me. <laughs> so now I crashed down on the ground. Then everybody, they, the shaheed became alive. People come rushing into the hospital. They're stomping me, grabbing me. Everybody said, get my clothes, tabarruk. He said, the, the revolutionary guard came in. They got me. They, they said, no, he's still alive. Take him to the emergency room. They wheeled him to the emergency room. And now he's almost out again. He tells the doctors, he says, no matter what happens, even if I flatline, I'm not going to die. Don't put me in the cold chambers. I'm not going to die. The doctors go over. They start operating. He says he 
passes out, he comes to. When he comes to, he sees the doctors are taking bullets out of him. And he hears them talking. They said, this guy, if he really is good, he's got a half an hour. He's done. He flatlined. When he flatlined, the doctors sent him back to the cold chambers. He's now back in the cold chambers. What happened was they told his commander, his commander loved him. They told him that Rafi became Shaheed. His commander goes over. He wants to go over and see his body the one last time, kiss him. He said, from the warmth of my commander putting his cheek on my cheek, I came too. And then they were like, Shaheed. They brought him back to the, now he was angry at the doctors. He said, I told you I'm not going to die. Why did you send me to the cold chambers? I told you, even if I flatline. He said, well, why are you talking about you so much yucky? He said, if Imam Mahdi said, I'm not going to become shaheed, I won't be shaheed. Now, inshallah, we're going to have the Masaib. Maulana will be leading the Masaib, and I'll be, inshallah, benefiting. I'd just like to mention one of the ahadith about the thawab of crying for the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Ridha says this, is a promise from Imam Ridha. He says, Yabna Shabi, O son of Shabi, in Bakayta ala al Hussein, alayhi salam, if you cry for Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, such that the tears roll down on your cheeks, Ghafarallahu laka kulla dhambin adnabta. God will forgive you every sin you ever committed. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al arwah allati hallat bi fanaik. Alayka minni salamu alayhi abadam ma baqeet wa baqiya al laylu wa al nahar. ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sallallahu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, second day of Muharram al Haram, inshallah, this Muharram will be the great Muharram of our life. I know that all of us, we came to the Majlis of Imam al Hussein as beautiful hadith quoted here from noble Prophet of Islam. In al Hussein. Safinatun Najat, Misbahul Huda. When it comes to the Aima, all of them are both of success. But when it comes to Imam Al Hussein, he will be Awsa wa Asra. His boat is so big that can contain everyone and will take us to the destination quick. How big the boat of Imam Hussain. Just imagine, Sheikh mentioned that those who were 
old enemies like Zuhair, when it comes to Imam al Hussein, although Shahid Mutahari he mentioned that Zuhair was fighting against Imam Ali in the Battle of Safin. But when it comes to Karbala, Imam al Hussein, Zuhair, Rahmatullah, or the enemies, those who were open enemies like Hor, when he take the step towards Imam al Hussein, the boat of Imam al Hussein, he got the victory. Or even those who are not Muslim, they heard nothing, they know nothing about Islam, like Wahhab Kalabi. With one small miracle, entire family of Wahhab Kalabi, they got victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only Wahhab, his wife Hania, the Jew, the Christian, and the mother, Umm Wahhab. Or the slave, Jaud. Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Abdullah. The second day of Muharram, brothers and sisters. Just imagine that the boat of Imam Hussain is such a big boat. The majlis of Imam Hussain, such as a power. Once we step in, we got the victory. Just imagine that when Zuhad, when John came to Imam al Hussain, asked the permission, Imam al Hussain would not give him permission. He said, Oh, John, you were with us for a long time, and you young, you serve us more than what it should be. Now you are horror, you're free, you can skip. In the night time, you can go. John said, Ya Abdullah, O Allah, O my master, in your lifetime, I was your master. Now that I had a real chance to have a successful, eternal, salvation life, and you want me to go away from you, Hasha, would not happen, O Hussain. Just give me permission with the permission of Imam al Hussain. When John was going to battle, one time John, he was coming down from a horse. He said, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abu Abdullah. Just imagine being in Karbala, second day of Muharram, when Imam al Hussain heard the voice of John. Imam al Hussain rushed to the battle. He was grabbing the hand of John. John, he opens his eye and he said, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, whom I'm seeing and who is my guest, Ya Rasulullah, the moment he saw, he saw that Imam Hussain he put his cheek on the cheek of John, Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, just imagine that tonight we came to this majlis of Imam Al Hussain, the boat of Imam Hussain, and once we want to take a step towards our homes and our normal busy life. Just imagine that now that I am got a title of being Azadar of Imam al Hussain, the one who's affiliated to the boat of Imam al Hussain, we can have lots of ni'mat and rahmat. Allahu Akbar. The event of Karbala, the Ashura, all the shahada, one after another, they had a great, unique background and history, as I mentioned, whether the old enemies or new enemies are slave, or those whom we can consider the childhood friend. You know, one of the childhood friend, who's that person? Habib ibn Mazahir al-Asadi. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes, when you want to mention some of the names, it's very difficult to explain their complete personality, the holistic approach to those shahada. But let me 
give you one glimpse of you know your Habib the Mazahir. Habib, he caught with the enemies. And in fact, he was one of those who wrote the letter to Imam Hussain asking, Oh Hussain, we are waiting for your presence. And he felt a guilt that one after another, everyone, they're betraying the ambassador of Imam Hussain, Muslim with Aqeel. Then what happened is, when he was caught up in Kufa, the news reached to him that a caravan of Imam Hussain is close to Karbala. And night time, he saw his old friend, Muslim bin Awsaja, and he said, Oh Muslim, what is your intention? What do you want to do? Muslim said, Oh my friend, I have no life without Hussain. I'm counting each and every split second. At that time, both these two great friends started their journey towards Karbala, night time, day time. The moment they reached to the Karbala, close to the Karbala, some of the hadith and rivas says on the 8th of Muharram or 9th of Muharram, when they arrived in Karbala, Zainab Kubra alayha, he heard that if Amir Hussain, after a long time, he smelled. When the smell of Imam Hussain, she saw, she said, Ya Akhal Hussain, oh my brother Hussain, why you're so happy? He said, Oh my sister Zainab, I have a great glad tiding, great news. What's your news? The news is Habib is with us. And my childhood friend is here, Allah Akbar. The moment Zainab Akbar, salam Allah, she heard, she said, Salim, then my salam to Habib. The moment Habib he heard, he began to beat himself. Allah Akbar, Habib, the one who got this title, Min, min al Hussain il Rajul al Allah Akbar, Imam Hussain himself, he wrote a letter to Habib to invite Allah. I don't know. Today, can we receive a letter from Imam of a time that I'm ready to take you in my boat, in my side, and my tent, in my camp? The fact that you are in this majlis of Imam Hussain, you got this letter. Brothers and sisters, now it's time to go to Karbala, stand in the Karbala, say salam. Alaykabidijamiansalamullahibatanabakid, <laughs> وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين أو حسين When it comes to the companion one after another any person who calls for you, you are there. <laughs> Allah be just take yourself to Karbala with Imam Hussain coming from the hearts. I don't know what he was calling. In fact, he was turned he turned towards Medina. He called Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Ummah. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Akha Hassan, he turned his face to Najat and he said, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain.
Please line up, brothers. There's a white line. We want the children to come forward, inshallah. All together. All together, every day and night, we remember Hussein. We cry for Hussein, and we call Ya Hussein. We cry for Hussein, and we call. In our role is to spread the message of Hussein. Everyone together. Our role is to spread the message of Hussein. To live like Ali and to die. Brothers, fill up the front line. To live, brothers in the back, please fill up the line. Sakum And to die like Hussein. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. MashaAllah. Here we come marching with no fear. Here we come marching with no fear. Saint for us by God's very dear. To the world we're not, to the world we're not attached at all. Paradise to us is very near. A thousand times we'll side with him. It is our pride to die for him. A thousand times we'll side with him. It is our pride to die for him. Illa shahada, la hayata, illa shahad. Everyone, la al maut, illa saada, la hayata, illa shahada, la hayata. Everyone recites this together. La al maut, illa saada, la hayata. I don't see death but happiness. I don't see life but martyrdom. Here we come marching with no fear. A saint for us by God is very dear. To the wall we're not attached at all. Paradise to us is very near. A thousand times we'll side with him. It is our pride to die for him, everyone. A thousand times we'll side with him. 
It is our pride to die for him. La al maut illa saada, la hayata illa shahada, la hayata illa shahada. La al maut, la al maut illa saada, la hayata. إلا شهادة لا حياة إلا شهادة. I oh Habib listen close to me. Oh Habib listen close to me. That man over there do you see? I make my last will now to you. While he is alive, come to me at his service with every breath. Do not leave him until you're dead. Listen at his service with every breath. Do not leave him until you're dead. La al maut el asada la hayata. Shahada, <laughs> شهيد عين كربلاء شهيد عين كربلاء شهيد عين كربلاء شهيد عين كربلاء all together شهيد عين كربلاء ما شاء الله شهيد عين كربلاء 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 حبيب المسلم have come to ask for permission to join حبيب المسلم have come to ask for permission to join the garden of love of Allah, fountain of death for Wilaya, the garden of love of Allah, fountain of death for Wilaya, Mawla Hussein is restless. I can't let you go, my friend. Mawla Hussein is is restless. I can't let you go, my friends. This has no meaning to this man. They ask my last ball question. This has no meaning to this man. They ask my last ball question. Maula John, what's the meaning of living without you? Maula John, what's the meaning of prayer without you? Maula John, what's the meaning of iman without you? Maula John. What's the meaning of Iman without you? Maula John, what's the meaning of living you? Everyone, Maula John, what's the meaning of prayer without you? Maula, mashallah, what's the meaning of Iman without you? Maula John, what's the meaning of Iman without you? Shaheed, Shaheed ain't a car, ya Mahdi. Shaheed ain't a car, Bala. 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 Habib. 
even Muslim have come to ask for permission to spell Habib and a Muslim have come to ask for permission to spell the perfume breeze of Shahada, the reliever of distress. After Hussein, where is the set to kiss from under his feet? After Hussein, where is the set to kiss from under his feet? After Hussein, where is the smile to seek for refuge in the heat? After Hussein, where is the smile to seek for refuge in the heat? Maula John, there is no life for us without you. Maula John, which footsteps to adore without you? Maula John, who smile to live for without you? Maula John. Who smile to live for without you, Maula John? There is no life for us without you, Maula. Everyone, there is no life for us without you, Maula John. Which footsteps to adore without you, Maula John? Who smiles to live for without you, Shahid Hain Karbala? 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 I, Habib and Muslim, have come to ask for permission to taste. Habib and Muslim have come to ask for permission to taste the sweet taste of sharp arrows, delightful flavor of spears, the sweet taste of sharp arrows, delightful flavor of spears. For you, Hussein, these are sweet. For you, Hussein, these chess breed. For you, Hussein, these heart beat. For you, Hussein, these chess breed. These next created for you. We have a small question for you. These next created for you. We have a small question for you. Maula John, what life have we known without? Maula John, what life have we known without you? Maula John, this blood in our veins is for you. Maula John, our souls were created for you. Maula John, what life have we known without you? Maula John. What life have we known without you, Maula John? This blood in our veins is for you, Maula John. Our souls were created for you, Shahid Ain Karbala. 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 Everyone, Allah, 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 Allah
When Satan ever raised me, Sakina trained me, mourning for Hussein Salah and Tayna, Amiri Hussein, Wanem al Amira, Wanem al Amira, Wanem al Salah and Tayna. Amiri Hussein, wa nam al Amira, wa nam al Amina, wa nam al Amira. Send me to Karbala, give me there. Send me to Karbala, give me there. Send me to Karbala, give me there. Leave me there, send me to Karbala. Leave me there, send me to Karbala. Leave me there, send me to Karbala. Leave me there, leave me there, send me to Karbala. I'm calling Hussein now, beating the chest to ease the pain. I'm calling Hussein now, beating the chest to ease the pain. Bain al Haramayna, I lose my voice calling your name. Bain al Haramayna. I lose my voice calling of me now. I'm calling Hussein now. Beating the chest to ease the pain. I'm calling Hussein now. Beating the chest to ease the pain. They know how to make now. I lose my voice calling your name. They know how to make now. I lose my voice calling your name. Hey Hussein, boy, Hussein, your voice, boy. Hussein, boy, Hussein, no matter, all together, Hussein, boy, Hussein, boy, Hussein, boy, Hussein, boy, Karabo. I I'm calling you saying now, beating the chest to is the bed. I'm calling you saying now, beating the chest to is the bed. I lose my voice calling your name. 
I lose my voice calling your name, Jose, boy, Jose, boy, Jose, boy, Jose, boy. Allahumma inna nusfir al-ghub bismik al-azim al-a'adham al-a'azim ajalilakum ya Allah. اللهم نبر قلوبنا بنور القرآن وهدنا إلى صراط علي بن أبي طالب اللهم ارزقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم اجعل أواقب أمورنا خيرا اللهم ارزقنا زيارة قبور أيمة الهدى اللهم ارزقنا شفاعة الحسين يوم الورود اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وصاكر المبحدين اللهم احفظ قائدنا اللهم عجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان واجعلنا من أعوانه من صار صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا أمير المؤمنين صلى الله عليك يا فاطمة الصحراء صلى الله عليك يا حسن ابن علي صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار لا جعله الله خير لحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعن وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين خصوص سيد ملاك الفضل عباس رحمة الله بركاته السلام عليك يا علي زين العابدين السلام عليك يا باقر علم النبي السلام عليك جعفر الصادق السلام عليك موسى القادم السلام عليك علي رضا السلام عليك محمد تقي السلام عليك علي النقي السلام عليك يا حسن العسكري السلام عليك يا صاحب الزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك ربنا الإيمان والإسلام السلام عليكم جميع رحمة الله وبركاته